Okay, today we're going to learn about solving multi-step equations. This is lesson 2.4. Our learning target for today is to find the value that makes the statement of equality true. So we're trying to find the value that makes the equation true. Before we start, let's go ahead and review what it means to solve an equation. So when we're solving, what it means is to identify the value that makes both expressions so remember, equations are made up of expressions equal to each other. So if you're looking at this example right here, we've got the variable expression 2x, and we've got the number expression 6. And so when we're solving, we're trying to figure out what number does x need to be in order to make the variable expression equal 6, and we know that number is 3. So that's what we're trying to figure out. How are equations solved? There are many ways, but, we, but we've learned that using algebraic properties is present in all of the different ways for solving an equation. How can a solution be proven correct? You can prove that you have the correct solution for an equation by evaluating the variable expression with the value that was identified. So if we have this equation here and we solved for x and we got 2, we can verify that 2 is actually the correct solution by plugging 2 back in for the variable and the variable expression. So we have 2 times 2 plus 3. And we know the variable expression, when we simplify, should equal 10 because that is the number expression that it's equaling. So we've got 2 plus 3 is 5. And we bring down the 2 that is being multiplied. And 2 times 5 is 10. So you see that we get an equation that is equal or two values that are the same. What happens if we had a solution that does not come back as equal? That means it's not a solution at all. So for example, x equals 4. If we plugged in 4 for x and we simplified it, we would get 2 times, uh, two times 7, sorry. And 2 times 7 is 14. And we know that 14 does not equal 10. So this is verifying that there's a number that is not a part of the solution set. Can there be more than one solution? So yes, there can. The number of solutions in the set is based on the power of the variable. So the power of the variable is referring to the, the exponent of the variable. So here we have the equation with x, and technically x is to the first power even though you don't see it, because we don't need to write ones in math. So because x is to the first power, when we are solving, we are going to get one solution. Likewise, if we had the equation here, which includes the variable x squared, we've got a variable to the second power, so we're going to have two solutions. So there's two numbers that would make the equation true. And then if we were solving an equation that had x to the third power, there's three numbers that would make the equation true true. So there's three solutions in the set. Let's go ahead and get into the first example today. So here we have directions. Rearrange the equation to uncover the solution. So our first step when we're solving is to identify the variable expression. So here we have 340. That doesn't have a variable in it. So this is the number expression. And then we have four minus 7 times 1 minus 7 times n, close parentheses. So there's our variable. This is the variable expression. So when solving, it's best to simplify each of the expressions before you start using inverse operations. So if we're going to simplify the expression, there's nothing that we can simplify on the right expression because 340 is just 340. However, there's some things that we can simplify and the variable expression. So let's first start by distributing. You can see that there's a number right in front of the parentheses, this negative 7, that we can multiply through the parentheses. So let's go ahead and do that. When we do that, we, we get this 4 comes down. We get a negative 7 times a positive 1 is a negative 7. And a negative 7 times a negative 7 is a positive 49 times n. And now we can combine like terms. So terms that are the same. So we've got two numbers that we know we can simplify to one number, 4 minus 7. These are considered like terms. So let's go ahead and combine these. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. So we have 340 
equals negative 3 plus 49n. So now we've simplified both of the expressions. There's nothing more that we can simplify. So we can start with step 3, which is use SADMEP. We learned about SADMEP and inverse operations to undo the numbers on the variable side or the variable expression. So we've got the numbers negative 3 and 49. Let's start by eliminating things that are being added or subtracted. This negative 3 is being subtracted because we have a negative in front that's being added, which is the same thing as subtraction. Remember, plus a negative, sorry, plus a negative equals a subtraction. So if we're wanting to undo subtraction, we've got to do the inverse, which is addition. So if we're adding 3 to both sides, we can write the equation as 34 plus 3 equals negative 3 plus 49 and plus 3. And now you can see we can go ahead and simplify. So we get 37 here, but we cannot simplify negative 3 and 3 yet because they are not next to each other. These are binary operations, so you can only simplify simplify things that are being added if they are next to each other. So before we can simplify the negative 3 and the positive 3, we've got to commute the 3 and the 49 in. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as 34 plus 3 equals negative 3 plus 3 plus 49 in. Now that we've commuted it, they're next to each other, we can go ahead and simplify. On the left expression we get 37 equals we know that negative 3 and 3 add up to 0. Those are additive inverses, plus 49. And we know that 0 plus 49 is just 49n. And this is not 34. This is 340, so I wrote it wrong. So this is not 37. It is 343. Good thing that I caught that mistake. 343. Now that we have just this number in front of the variable left, 49, we know there's no sign between them, so they're being multiplied. We need to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division to eliminate it. So we're going to divide by the number we want to eliminate. So we're going to divide the left side by 49, and we're going to divide the right side by 49. Now we can go ahead and simplify. So 343 divided by 49. Be right back. I'm going to use the calculator for that. So I punch it in the calculator and I get 7. So the left side simplifies to 7. And we know 49 divided by 49. Anything divided by itself is 1 times n. And we know that 7 equals 1n is the same thing as 7 equals n. So our fourth step here would be to cite the justifications for each of the steps. So I'm going to go back and I'll use the color red. And I'm going to give justifications for each step. So we started here. How did we get from this equation to this ex equation? We distributed. So we can say that we use the distributed property. And then from this equation to this equation, what do we do? We combine like terms, which is simplify. And we had written the equation again up here. So from this equation to this equation, what did we do? Looks like we added 3 to both sides. We can do that because of the additive property of equality. And then we commuted the 3 and the 49 in, and that is the commutative property of addition. We're changing the order. They're getting added. And then we simplified to get to the 0 plus 49 in equation. And then 0 plus 49 in is the same thing as 49 in because of the additive identity. So I'm going to abbreviate that. And... Now we divided both sides by 49, so we use the division property of equality. And then we simplify to get 1n equals 7. And then 1 times n is the same thing as n because of the multiplicative identity. That's a better way to abbreviate it. I totally spelled it wrong up here. Now, fifth step is just to verify the solution by evaluating. So I'm going to take 7, and I'm going to plug it back in for n in the calculator. So you can see that I plugged in 7 for where the n would be. I put it in parentheses just to be safe. And now when we simplify this, or we 
evaluate this variable expression with the number now. We should be getting what the number expression equals, so 340, let's see. Yes, we did. So we verified that 340 equals 340. So 7 is, in fact, our solution. Let's move on to the second example today. Example number 2. So it's asking us to identify the variable expression. And we can see clearly that the left expression includes the variable m. So we know this is our variable expression. This is our number expression. We can move on to the second step, which is to simplify. And is there anything to distribute? We've got parentheses, and we've got a number that's being multiplied on the outside. So we can go ahead and start by distributing. I'm going to use a calculator for these because we're now using or operating with decimals. So we have 1.2 times negative 7.8, and we get negative 9.36 m. And we have to multiply 1.2 times negative 6.6 and we get negative 7.92 so we have minus 7.92 we can drop the parentheses now minus 3.9 m equals negative 106.044 now is there anything that we can combine any like terms well we've got a variable term with m we've got a variable term with m so we've got like terms here before we can combine them though we have to get them next to each other so let's rewrite this by commuting them first I'm taking the sign when I commute and now we can go ahead and simplify them because they are next to each other so I'm going to use a calculator to do this so you can see I put the numbers in that I'm combining in the calculator and we get negative 13.26 so we have minus 13.26 m and minus 7.92 equals negative 106.44 or 044 sorry now that we've simplified both expressions as much as possible we can go ahead and start using sadmep to identify what operations we need to undo first. So I'm going to rewrite it up here. And the number that we want to eliminate because addition and subtraction is the easiest to eliminate first is the minus 7.92. So we're going to add 7.92 to both sides. We can rewrite the equation as plus 7.92 if I add it to one side I must add it to the other side and now we can go ahead and simplify we know that these simplify to 0 so we're left with negative 13.26 m plus 0 and we can simplify these and I'm going to use the calculator to do that. So I plugged it in the calculator. I'm hitting enter and I get 113.964. Now we know that this is the same thing as negative 13.26m. So we're now trying to eliminate the negative 13.26. Since there's no sign between that and the variable, we know they're being multiplied, so we need to divide. So let's go ahead and divide by the number we want to eliminate. So we're going to divide the left side by negative 13.26m, or just negative 13.26. We don't want to divide by m. And then do the same to the right expression. And now I'm going to use the calculator to simplify. So I've punched in the calculator. And we get a long decimal. So let me see how can we write this. And when we simplify the left side, we know that any number divided by itself is 1. M equals, and that long decimal was negative 8.59457013357. I'm going to plug that in the calculator to see if it's 
the right solution. Time, so just trust me.